These are the mistakes I see people making time and time again when starting to learn Portuguese. So save yourself some time and watch this video first. Olá pessoal, it is Liz from Talk the Streets and I am back with another video to help you build your confidence and conversation skills in Portuguese. And today I'm going to be covering some of the classic wrong turns that people make when they start learning Portuguese. I've worked with literally hundreds of students over the years, so it's all based on experience. So if you're ready, hit that like button and subscribe and let's dive in to five ways to fail at learning Portuguese. So the first way to fail is relying solely on apps. It may sound surprising because I have done videos recommending various apps in the past and yes, they can be helpful, but as a supplement, not as your whole language learning strategy. Why is this? Well, the reason is, they're designed to be games for you to have a short attention span with using, right? So they're going to give you little pieces of the puzzle, but they're not going to give you the whole picture that's actually going to help you learn the language. So you might have done, I don't know, a 180 day streak on one of these apps and it makes you feel good, like you're making progress, right? But let me ask you, can you actually string a sentence together? My guess is that you might struggle. You are especially going to struggle if you have been relying on Duolingo, because if nobody has told you yet, that's actually Brazilian Portuguese. Now, yes, it is the same language, but if you are coming to Portugal, you are gonna wanna be focusing on Portuguese as is spoken here, which is quite different. So actually using Duolingo can be pretty counterproductive. So I want you to reframe the way that you are thinking about language learning apps and see them as like a complement to a bigger language learning strategy and not what you should be relying on to teach you the whole language. If you wanna check out this video, I do have recommendations, but they really should be a small part of your journey. Now, the second way to fail is by not researching the course that you are going to join. Now, here is my beef with most courses and tutors, to be honest. The way they measure your progress of learning the language is by having a checklist of all the grammar points that you need to be able to understand and use. So the most common level that people are trying to get to when they're starting to learn Portuguese is A2, which is like an upper beginner level. So in order to reach an A2 level, there is a particular list of grammar that you need to understand. So for example, you need to conjugate the present tense. You need to understand the difference between ser and estar, the two verbs to be. So lots of courses will focus on you doing this, but via kind of filling the gaps in a worksheet. So my question for you is this, what do you actually want to learn to do? To be able to pass a test where you can find the right answers in these grammatical questions, or do you actually want to be able to hold a conversation and really speak Portuguese? So many people have come to me and said, well, I managed to scrape by on the A2 exam or the exam that we had at the end of my course, but I still can't go into my local restaurant and order a meal. That's not what we want. So make sure you find out whether the course you are joining is actually geared towards helping you speak and ask how much speaking practice you are going to be doing. This is why I designed my program Portuguese Pro completely differently. The outcome is actually being able to hold a 10 minute conversation with a native speaker. Of course, we cover grammar as well, but it's all rooted in real life scenarios. So people are learning the grammar they need as they go, but actually speaking from day one by navigating practical situations by themselves. If you're interested in finding out more about my Portuguese Pro program, I have linked some student testimonials in the description, as well as the free taster lesson that you can take to get an idea of how it all works and all the details to apply. I hope to see you there. The third way to fail is by by using Brazilian materials. Now, let me be very clear, I am only speaking about people who are in the process of relocating to Portugal, and that's the reason that they are learning Portuguese. It just makes more sense to get familiar with the way Portuguese is spoken here, 
Again, it's the same language, but it sounds very different. I can't tell you how many people have said to me, I did really well learning from Duolingo, which is Brazilian Portuguese, but when I got to Portugal, I didn't understand a thing. If you want to learn about the major differences between European and Brazilian Portuguese, I do have several videos that you can check out next. I will link them below. So do yourself a favor and use European Portuguese materials from the get-go. The good news is they are so much easier to get now. You will find tons of content online. And of course, on this channel, I have over a hundred videos that are gonna help you out. So make sure you stick around and check them out. The fourth way to fail at learning Portuguese is by not staying consistent. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is, how much time should I be spending studying learning Portuguese? And my answer is that I'm a really big fan of little, and often. I actually don't think doing super intensive blocks is going to be helpful for you, especially when you're a beginner, because your brain is trying to absorb so much information that feels really, really alien to it. So the best thing to do is to actually set aside quite a small amount of time, but do it consistently every day or as often as you can. So it can be as little as 20 to 30 minutes. Between 30 minutes to an hour would be ideal. Whatever you feel like is the optimum for the amount that your brain can take in in one go. It's even more helpful if you can do it at the same time every day and actually build it into a daily habit inside your daily routine. So you might say, when I get my coffee first thing in the morning, that's when I'm gonna sit down and do 30 minutes of Portuguese. Or I'm gonna really look forward to doing my Portuguese during my lunch break from 1.30 till two. Whatever it is, if you can make a daily habit out of it, you're actually gonna learn and retain so much more because you're doing it so consistently. Check out this video to give you some ideas of different daily habits that you can do to practice your reading, listening, writing, and speaking in Portuguese. This is gonna really help you stay consistent and keep progressing over time. The fifth and final way to fail at learning Portuguese is not going to come as a surprise to anybody, and that is not doing any speaking practice. I've already said I am a huge advocate of starting speaking from day one. Don't wait around until you feel comfortable or ready to do it, because guess what? That day is never going to come. So you need to start with short, practical phrases and start testing these when you're out and about. And this is what's really gonna build your confidence. The thing is, when we are adults learning a language, fear and the fear of failure or looking stupid is actually the biggest roadblock that we need to overcome. I did a whole video about this here where I spoke to a friend of mine who is a psychologist and we really talked about what's going on in our brain when this is happening. But essentially it's blocking us from learning because we're so scared of making a mistake. So the sooner you start your speaking practice, the sooner you are able to get over these nerves and this kind of mindset issue because if you start putting it off, you're gonna put it off forever. So when you first get started, as I said, this is gonna be as simple as using your Portuguese in day-to-day -day practical situations. I have a ton of videos on this channel that talk you through how to navigate certain practical situations, everything from asking from, for directions to getting the bus. But when you have a baseline of the various vocabulary and grammar that you need and you're feeling good about your pronunciation, this is when you need to start a very regular speaking practice. You should be speaking to a native speaker for about 30 minutes, at least once a week, if you want to see your speaking skills improve. I recently did a video on this as well, where I talked you through several ways that students of mine have found people to practice with, because I promise it's not impossible. It is going to be a little bit uncomfortable at first, though you're probably going to think the first time you do it is an absolute disaster. But again, these are all milestones that you simply just have to go through in order to get to the other side where you feel comfortable with speaking. You might need to meet a few people before you find somebody that you really, really click with, but stick with it because I cannot stress enough how this is one of the most important components that you need in your regular practice in order to see improvements in your Portuguese. 
If you're sitting there thinking, I could never do that, well then I wanna encourage you to check out this interview that I did recently with my student, Emile. She had an amazing story of how she was such a perfectionist and she was so worried about starting speaking practice. But now the Portuguese lady that she speaks with every week is one of her closest friends. They really enjoy getting to speak to each other every week and it's really helped a new friendship to grow. So if you want some inspiration, if you want to learn how this can be done, definitely go and check out their interview with Emil. I think it's gonna really inspire you. If you are not yet in a place where you could hold a conversation, that's totally fine. As I said, you do need to build up a baseline of knowledge before you even attempt something like this. So if you're not there yet and you need some help, my free lesson for beginners is for you. It's linked in the description and I promise it's gonna be the best hour you spend getting started with learning Portuguese. You can register in the description. I really hope to see you there. So there you have it, five ways to fail at learning Portuguese. I really hope that this saves you some time and energy and that you now feel like you have a really helpful roadmap to actually get started. I'll be back at the same time next week with more tips and tutorials to improve your confidence and conversation skills. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing. Ciao for now.